Welcome to another episode of FeatherCast. Those of you that listen frequently know that we've taken a month off because of Apache Con, and we were busy with that. And so now we're back. And our first interview back is with Chris Dutz of the PLC4X project. Thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> So those of you that listen know that I always ask the the hard, deep delving questions. And so I got to start with this one. What's up with Toddy? Yeah, well, Toddy is sitting uh, on, on my window bench here. Uh, so uh, Toddy says hi. <laughs> and uh, of course, Toddy is the, uh, the the mascot and the logo of the project. And uh, what what is he? Is he like a meerkat? What? Uh, he, he's a palm civet. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I was looking for a, a mascot with a name that yeah. has a P, an L, and a C in it. And it was sort of pelican or palm civet. And let's say uh, I don't feel that attached to pelicans, but <laughs> I love the palm civet. <laughs> Tell us about this this project and and what it does. I mean, we we can all we can all read the description on the website, but but tell us what it actually does in the real world and who would use this. Yeah, well, uh, in general, let's say uh, private people will probably only uh, in very uh, sort of limited amount use this. But for the, the industry, it's actually a vital part because uh, sort of in the in the past few years, everything's sort of about this industry 4.0. Uh, and if you start digging what that means, uh, it's sort of like processing huge amounts of production data. Um, and, uh, well, the problem that most people are forgetting here is that actually accessing this data on these machines, uh, you can see behind me, I've got my little demo factory and it's uh, fully equipped with this, uh, industrial hardware and they just don't use protocols that we're used to. Um, so it's currently very difficult, uh, to get, to access these machines. It's getting better with newer machines, but they're currently really hard to get, uh, with all this, uh, problems in production. Um, and uh, you can generally expect that more than 90% of the devices out there just don't speak any protocol that we use to. Yeah. And uh, PLC4X is trying to close that gap. That hardware that you have behind you, I have a couple of questions about it. Is, is it. is it typical for that to be custom per industry? Do people like build it themselves or is there, is this, are they consistent across a particular industry? Uh, yeah, well, let's say uh, each vendor has their own systems and they are usually not compatible with each other because that so, sort of would be silly uh, from their point of view. Um, but um, in general, it's sort of like, yeah, every vendor has their uh, products and, and they're used throughout the world. Uh, so if I, for example, uh, get uh, an S7 uh, from Siemens, that will be the same everywhere on the planet. Right. Okay. Um, but yeah, the, the, the devices themselves, they usually differ quite, quite greatly between each other. Tell us some, some user stories. Where are these actually used in the real world? What sort of industries use this kind of stuff and use your code specifically? Yeah, well, uh, I, I would say uh, all industries use it. Um, uh, I, I started PLC4X uh, uh, as I wanted to enable the small businesses that just couldn't afford uh, the huge price tags on yeah. um, stuff the industry was asking for. Um, but in the end, it turned out uh, we, we had uh, contracts in the, in the biggest car manufacturers. Uh, huge ma pharmaceutical companies. Uh, we even had uh, one of the biggest aerospace uh, companies uh, that that asked uh, for for support uh, with uh, using plc 4 x So, so I would say uh, we've seen it from steel melting plants to uh, pharmaceutical companies. Uh, wherever there is a machinery, uh, it usually in the past you usually custom built circuits. Well, in the past, let's say till Second World War, or shortly after that. So they were custom built, but today, usually a, a PLC is shipped, uh, and that is a standard component. Um, yeah, so everything that is automated by one of these standard components, well, you can use. Is PLC for X becoming sort of an industry standard, and and uh, or is this still something that, that industries don't really talk to each other about? Yeah, yeah, that, that's that's sort of our, our biggest pain point because uh, we can see from uh, the emails uh, on our mailing list that the that it's coming from all over the place and all sizes of companies. But we all they're, they're super protective about 
who they are and what they're doing. Sometimes it's just me sort of like, hmm, this name, let me Google that or, or, or let me have a look on LinkedIn. So, oh, that company, so that's interesting. So they usually don't even use their company uh, email addresses uh, to ask questions for support. They, they usually use their sort of like private Google mail uh, uh, email addresses. Um, but yeah, we can definitely see it's been used all over the place. Um, yeah, uh, but the, the thing is, uh, to, we're, we're sort of like in other uh, areas of software, we're not really able to get people to talk about what they're doing with it. So if you are a, a plc for x user, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love to hear your, your stories and, uh, you know, how you're using this and how it's making your life easier and how it's saving you money and all that good stuff. Yeah, and speaking about saving money, uh, so uh, maybe just to give you your the, the audience uh, an impression on uh, how much money uh, you could actually save. So um, I, I had a, a proof of concept that I did for a large pharmaceutical company uh, where we managed to give them real time access to production data. So their data scientists could actually work with the data that was produced because uh, FDA regulations usually require companies to really lock down their production environments. And let's, yeah, let's face it, data scientists, they work best if you give them data. Uh, and we were able to do that. Uh, and uh, it was, uh, they, they, they could save uh, up to 100,000 euros in license costs wow. per machine per year. Um, and in another proof of concept, we were we even outperformed the industry standard solution by a factor of 1,200. <laughs> so we were 1,200 times more performant while having absolutely no license costs. So uh, in that project, it would actually have uh, boiled down to 180 million euros in license costs they could have saved. But then uh, we usually uh, had the problems that we then uh, had to uh, face the shopping departments. Mm -hmm. They usually are uh, very afraid that they sort of lose their benefits with their preferred vendors or managers that are really scared of losing budget. Because um, if you're used to sort of like buying an industry standard solution and paying 100,000 for that, uh, well, that's 100,000 of budget you get to decide about. Uh, if you decide to go open source, uh, that 100,000 goes down to zero or let's say 10,000. Um, so if you do that, well, next year you get your budget cut. So uh, <laughs> people are actually yeah. really afraid of going the open source path because it's so cheap, because they're afraid they can never leave from there again um, due to uh, budget costs. Yeah. I notice on your website, and, and this is something I look for, for for all Apache projects that I talk to, um, and, and you call this out specifically, and this is all the other Apache projects that you interact with. Um, tell us about that and your relationship with these other projects. Yeah, well, um, when, I, when I started, uh, or before I even started Apache plc uh, I really wanted to do this industry 4.0 stuff. And I knew we had all this great software, especially at Apache, that we could actually do this stuff with. Um, but the thing was, we couldn't access the data. So, well, I uh, I decided, yeah, well, I have to sort of build that adapter first. But it was always clear that the data has to go somewhere. You, you usually don't, don't use plc for x on its own. You can. You can write your own application. But usually today, it's not, not that typical anymore. So you, you usually integrate that into Apache NiFi, for example, and model your, your uh, data pipelines. Or you use Apache Camel. Uh, we, we had uh, Apache Agent, which is now retired. Or uh, even uh, Apache Kafka. Uh, we have a uh, Kafka Connect adapter that sort of pumps data from a PLC directly into a Kafka cluster. So we've got a lot of integration modules, and we're always trying to reach out to new projects. I usually stumble over at uh, Apache Cons or something like that. So, so yeah, so I, I'm really trying to get other projects so we can provide a service for them to offer a service to the industry. Because let's face it, the, the connectivity part is important, but the real the real work will be done with uh, with all the projects on top. So this year, I also tried reaching out to the Linux Foundation and Eclipse Foundation uh, because they've also got interesting projects. And um, I'm, I'm really trying to sort of weave a web uh, of yeah. projects that sort of like work together a bit more. Now, the, the project has been at Apache for about two years. And I noticed that during that time, you've had what? 
11, 12 releases. Uh, the most recent one was about two months ago. What's what's coming next? Is is the next version going to be zero point ten, or are you are you on a, a one point zero, or yeah, what's coming next? Yeah, we're we're still working on the 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 point ten because uh, uh, we're currently sort of like fleshing out some new APIs, uh, and we know they're going to change a bit. Uh, and especially, we're currently completely renovating our code generation framework that we build all these drivers with, because um, PLC Frex doesn't just offer drivers uh, for Java. That, that was how it started. Mm -hmm. But we always called it PLC for X and not PLC for J because we always aimed at multiple languages. So we have a code generation framework that generates sort of 90% of the driver code currently in Java, in Go, in C. Um, C Sharp is already on its way. Uh, and the community is sort of like getting started on Python, Rust, and TypeScript. So a lot is going to be happening. <laughs> And uh, everyone's welcome to participate because, uh, let's face it, uh, I on my own can't build drivers in 20 languages. Uh, that's that's where we need the community for. So I was going to ask you about the name and, and the uh, the four X bit, and you just you just covered that. But but what other what brought you into this this whole area in the first place? First of all, uh, I'm the son of an electro, uh, electrical engineer. So uh, I grew up as a kid with my dad always bringing back these sort of like huge boxes. I mean, that, that S7 back there, that's tiny. But that was sort of like as big as a box of beer uh, in, in, the, in the 80s. Um, and uh, so, so I always enjoyed uh, sort of watching him do things that had an effect on the real world. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, in contrast, me and my IT job uh, here near Frankfurt, going to one stupid bank after the other, um, always doing the same stuff that just didn't give me a sense of purpose. Um, so, so I enjoyed things happening in the real world. And when this Industry 4.0 stuff came out, say, hey, I can do all of this cool stuff, yeah. but do something good. Uh, uh, so so that, that was what sort of got me hooked on that topic. If someone else is is interested in getting involved here, what kind of skills do they need? Um, what what expertises are you looking for as a project? Uh, I have to admit, uh, I, I couldn't even correct uh, ca characterize uh, the the typical <laughs> contributor. Uh, let, let, if I just have a look at our current community, we have some hardcore coders. We have uh, we have some people that uh, describe themselves as uh, PowerPoint DJs. Uh, there are some people uh, that even say they can't even they're not coders but they're currently implementing huge amounts of drivers uh, even without coding because we have this cool code generation framework uh, sometimes it's just important if somebody just helps uh, curating our, our website or or just brings some inside information uh, some some insights that we or it's just testing stuff, or reports back, hey, I've used your code, and we've had this and that problem in this and that situation. So I, I think it's, it's there's a, a vast uh, amount of different ways you can contribute to the, the project. And I, I think we're a very welcoming project. So uh, usually, uh, we all know there are these projects where you have to sort of like uh, submit pull requests uh, for uh, something near 10 years or so until you get invited. <laughs> Uh, so, so that usually happens a lot faster uh, with us because uh, we believe that everybody has something to bring uh, and uh, we, we try to enable people uh, to, to be able to bring what they can. Um, we also don't have that many strict rules that some other projects might have. Uh, so, so we're actually a quite fun place to contribute. If, if somebody wanted to, to participate in the project but didn't have your your vast array of hardware there. Um, how does one how does one test code contributions in a meaningful way if if you don't have the you know all of the test lab that you got there? Yeah, well, I think most most of our contributors don't e even have PLCs. Um, I think one of the the the, the second uh, most active contributor, I think he I, I think he doesn't have a single PLC. Uh, but we built a, a, a unit test and integration test framework that allows us to sort of, um, for example, if somebody has the real hardware, you can sort of like do a recording of what happens with the real hardware 
and it's able to sort of mimic what the real hardware did. So somebody without real hardware can sort of at least see if if something changed uh, uh, by by his changes, and and you can sort of it's easily readable. Okay, most people say XML sort of sucks, but I have to admit I love it. Um, and uh, so our our unit test framework is mainly based on XML, uh, and the cool thing is it's just portable. So you just write one unit test uh, in 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 our XML framework, and you can run it on every platform that uh, in Java, Go, whatever we have. It automatically runs on all these. Now, other than seeing you at ApacheCon, um, where else can we get in touch with your community? Yeah, well, uh, uh, right now I usually sort of like submit. Uh, talks at least to, to every uh, uh, conference I, I uh, come across. For obvious reasons, we, we didn't have any on-site meetings with community uh, for the last few years or two years. Uh, we really, really hope that's probably going to change next year. Uh, so usually everything uh, in our community happens uh, on uh, on our mailing list. Uh, that's dev at uh, plc4x.apache.org. Um, or, um, uh, well, we usually hang out on Slack, uh, on the Apache Slack channel, uh, PLC4X, but that's sort of where we tend to hang out and sort of like have fun chats and sort of like at least keep a bit of a feeling that we're a community that's working on something together without the, 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 all the technical blah, blah. Uh, so, so if you want to join, uh, I strongly suggest just join us on, on the, the, uh, Apache Slack uh, channel, uh, or or sign up for the mailing list. Uh, that's that's where all the magic happens at Apache. Well, thank you so much for taking this time to to talk with us about this project. And uh, you know, it's 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 clear as an outside observer that your community is very welcoming and enjoys a bit of fun. And so it sounds like a great place for <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a great place for people to get involved and. Uh, we, we hope that uh, you can get the word out with this. Thanks for taking time yeah. to talk with us. Yeah, thanks for having me.